Hi everyone. So lately I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys regarding various plants and whether or not they can live in water on a permanent basis versus just propagating them in water. So I wanted to make a video for you guys today specifically on that topic. And basically this is what is called hydroponics. So growing plants solely in water, no soil, no LECA, no pond, just straight up water in a vessel. Now, before we go any further on this topic, I have had some of you ask about plants because you wanted to put them in aquariums. When it comes to aquariums and plants to put in aquariums, you really need to stick to true aquatic plants. And most pet stores, assuming they carry aquariums, fish and that kind of thing, will have true aquatic plants and that's where you would go to get those. Taking regular house plants like we're talking about today and putting them in aquariums can cause more harm than good. So definitely would not recommend that. But what I think we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through the list of plants that can be grown on a permanent basis in water first. And then after that, I'm gonna explain some of the how to care for plants if you're gonna do that, the things you need to do to make sure that it's gonna work. And then I'm also gonna tell you guys some of the pros and cons to growing plants permanently in water because it's really not for everyone. But the first plants that I wanna talk about that can definitely be grown in water on a ongoing basis are pothos. So when I say pothos, I am talking about both syndapsis plants as well as epiprimnum plants. Did I say it right today, you guys? Abigail, if you're watching, comment down below and let me know. Some of you guys have been saying that I've been saying epiprimnum incorrectly, and honestly, it just flows out of my mouth so fast, I don't even know if I really think about it anymore. So hopefully I said it right today, but those are the two genus of plants I'm talking about when I say pothos, and both of them will grow excellently in water on an ongoing basis. Now, some other vining plants that you can grow in water as well include your vining philodendron. So for example, your philodendron micans, your philodendron brazil, your philodendron brandies, all of those will survive in water long-term as well. And actually you guys, a lot of your aeroids will survive in water long-term and a lot of your aeroids actually kind of like to stay more on the moist side anyways. So I kind of find that the more a plant likes to be kept moist, the more likely it is to be able to survive in water with the exception of calatheas. That would be the one exception where I definitely would not be wanting to put that plant in water for a permanent situation because it really honestly would not survive. It would start to decline. But other aeroids such as your alocasias, colocasias, your caladiums even, these plants definitely can be grown in water for an extended period of time. You actually find these plants often in the wild, especially for example, your colocasias or your taro plants are actually grown in water. So swampy, low water areas. So definitely if a plant can survive in that, it's gonna be able to survive long-term in water. Now, in addition to that, other aeroids you have that you can grow in water long-term would be your schismatoglottis plants. Once again, they tend to grow in highly wet areas. Also, aglianema plants can be grown in water on an extended basis. Your monsteras can be grown in water on an extended basis. So can syngonium plants. And even your Raphidophora tetraspermas, as well as most other Raphidophora species, can be grown on an ongoing basis in water. Now, another genus of plants that do well in water on an extended basis are actually Dracaena. And just a quick reminder, you guys, that not that long ago, snake plants were reclassified out of Sansevieria into the genus Dracaena. So when I say Dracaena, I also mean snake plants. Snake plants do excellent in water for extended periods of time. Also in Dracaena is lucky bamboo. So a lot of people own lucky bamboo that can be grown in water as well. In the wild, once again, it is sometimes found growing in shallow water, marshy type places, ferns. Ferns are another plant that can be grown in water as well. Once again, ferns are super moisture loving plants. They hate to dry out like even in the slightest. And once again, like I said, I feel like plants that fall into that category, most of them can actually survive long-term in solely water. Now, some interesting plants that you might not have thought could survive in water are ficus plants. So most ficus can survive in water for an extended period of time. This is probably one of the biggest plants in terms of like the fact that they're really trees that I could think of that can live in water for an extended period of time. And you guys, I will explain after we go through the plants, like what I mean by extended period of time and whether or not, you know, a plant's gonna be able to survive longer in water or the same amount of time in water as it would in soil and whatnot. So we are gonna get to that here in a second. But yes, ficus plants can be grown in water for an extended period of time. 
Also peace lilies. Peace lilies do great in water. Once again, they really don't particularly like to dry out that much either. So they are fine with being kept in water. Ivies, a lot of ivies will grow in water as well. ZZ plants can successfully be grown solely in water. And if I'm being honest with you guys, there are a lot of plants out there that should be able to grow in water for extended period of times that I'm not gonna necessarily cover today. I wanna cover like the big ones that I think you guys might own and the ones that I know for certain based on people I know who have them growing in water and have had them growing in water for a very long time. I know that it works. I know that it's successful. So that's kind of the ones that I'm sticking to today. And there are two that I wanna mention real quick that I couldn't find anybody who definitively had tried it at all to say whether or not it would work. But just based on what I know about these next two plants, I kind of feel like they probably could be grown in water for an extended period of time. And that is Athelandra squarosa, more commonly known as the zebra plant, and then also Pilea cadiriae, more commonly known as the aluminum plant. Because these two plants, I've told you guys before, they just do not like to dry out in the slightest. They throw a fit if they dry out in the slightest. And so because a lot of these other plants we've talked about that are that way, can survive in water for extended period of time. I feel like you could probably do it with these two as well. But once again, I've never done it with these two. I couldn't find anybody I personally know who had even tried it. So I don't wanna say definitively you can or you can't, unless one of you out there has done it before and knows it works. If so, please comment down below and let us know. All right, you guys, so now that we've gone through that list of plants that you can grow in water for an extended period of time, let's kind of talk about the process and also the pros and cons of doing this. So obviously on the surface level, it sounds pretty simple, right? You find a vessel, you put water in it, you put your plant in it, your plant stays in that vessel. So yes, that is relatively simple, but there are some important things you need to think about and take into consideration. So first of all, when you're choosing the vessel that you're gonna put your plant in, you wanna make sure that as those roots develop and that root structure gets bigger in that water over time, that the shape of the vessel is not eventually gonna restrict you from being able to remove the plant to change out the water. So for example, having a very small narrow opening at the top might work initially, especially if you're starting roots in water by propagating a plant, but as it develops lower down, it may be harder for you to get those roots out, especially if the vessel you're using is wider at the bottom. So definitely keep that in mind when you're making a decision of what you're gonna put your plant that you're growing water into. Another thing to keep in mind is that if it is something that is clear, a completely clear glass container of sorts, when you have that in a sunny place, the light is going to be able to heat up that water much more efficiently than it is soil. So you need to be mindful that you're not putting it somewhere where it's getting too much light to the point that that water is getting heated up to the point that it's gonna cause problems with the roots and your plant. Now you can kind of get around that depending on what your lighting situation is by using a more opaque glass container, such as like a blue tinted glass container or a brown tinted glass container. But at the end of the day, the glass is gonna heat up and that water is gonna heat up regardless. And this pretty much goes the same for even an opaque container, such as a ceramic container, although I find that they don't allow that water to heat up quite as much as a glass one. So you definitely wanna keep that in mind. Also, if you do have a see-through container, the sun is gonna be able to come into contact with those roots. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but you can start to see the development of algae within that water and on those roots if you're not careful about it. Now, if you are just wanting to grow these plants in water because you think it's gonna be easier and it's not really an aesthetic reason for doing it, then you can do what I do and just treat your containers, your glass or ceramic or whatever it may be containers, as kind of how I treat my nursery pots, I put them inside of an opaque cover pot. You could do that as well, and that will help prevent those issues of the sun heating up the water or causing algae growth. Now, another thing to be aware of is that even though I'm saying you can have these plants live in water you know, for extended periods of time, that doesn't mean you just put them in water and you forget about them. You need to be changing that water out at least once a week because you want to be able to refresh the water, not only to make sure that there's not like, you know, bacteria or something like that growing in the water, but also your plant is now solely going to be getting the oxygen from the water versus, you know, soil or air pockets in the soil. The roots are only getting the oxygen from that water and eventually they will deplete the oxygen that's available in that water. So you're going to need to refresh it. Now, when you do refresh your water, always take a look at the roots. If it looks like they've got something funky going on them, I would recommend taking the plant out and rinsing the roots off as well underneath the water from your faucet, just to make sure you're getting anything off there. Because one of the big pros that a lot of people like about hydroponics and growing plants indefinitely in water is that you don't have to worry about 
overwatering your plant or getting root rot. Well, I have news for you. Yes, you don't have to worry about overwatering your plant, but your plant can still get root rot if you are growing it slowly in water because bacteria, like I mentioned before, algae, things can develop in that water over time. And if they attack your roots and you don't do anything about it, then you can get root rot even though you're growing that plant solely in water. Now, another big thing that a lot of people don't think about is fertilization when it comes to growing plants in water over an extended period of time. These plants are not in soil, so they don't have access to the nutrients that they would be getting if they were in soil, so you have to give them nutrients via fertilization. A water-soluble fertilizer is all you need, any kind of water-soluble fertilizer. You're gonna wanna do that still kind of basically based on the recommendations that you see on there. And if you fertilize that water, let's say you just changed out the water, you put in the fertilizer next week when you go to change out the water, just put in regular water again. You don't need to do it repeatedly like every single time that you're changing out that water. Typically, I think about once a month, maybe once every two weeks would be good depending on you know season and how quickly a plant is growing and whatnot. But there's definitely a lot of information out there from people who solely do hydroponics, recommending fertilizers and everything. I will see if I can find some recommended fertilizers for hydroponics for you guys and link them down below so that you can check those out as well. And another thing to be mindful of is the quality of the water that you're gonna be using to do this. A lot of people who are really into hydroponics will use solely rainwater that they collect in order to grow their plants in because that is one of the purest types of water that we can get that our plants will like. I personally know my tap water is no good here, so I would not be using my tap water to do this. I would be using my filtered water from my fridge most likely. And you know, probably how your plants that are in soil respond to the type of water you're using will give you a pretty good idea of whether you could use that water to grow plants in water on like a permanent basis or not. But as far as starting this whole process goes, I honestly would recommend that you do it just by taking propagations of your existing plants that you want to move to growing in water on a full-time basis. The problem with taking a plant that has already been growing in soil and trying to remove all that soil and then move it into water is that you have soil roots in that pot. Soil roots and water roots are different. This is why we tell you when you're water propagating plants not to leave them in that water for too long because if you do, those roots become adapted to living in water and they have a hard time transitioning to living in soil and they might not make it when you try to transfer them to soil. So same thing goes for going the opposite direction because now you've got what are known as soil roots in a pot. They're not used to growing in water. They're not adapted to growing in water. So when you move them to water, there's a good chance that they're not gonna make it. So basically the difference you guys between water roots and soil roots really has to do with what they become adapted to. And you'll find that water roots are much finer and thinner in nature. They don't have to like burrow through soil or anything like that. So typically we see soil roots, they develop to be more kind of robust and everything because they have to kind of navigate and push their way through that soil. So honestly, I have heard people try to take plants completely out of soil, rinse them off, move them to water, and that sometimes they have success with it. What I think is probably happening in that situation is that it's starting to develop new water roots while it's in there. And the old roots, it, it happens like quick enough that the old roots don't just completely rot off and die before that plant can sustain itself. But I really do think you're gonna have better luck and it's gonna be easier if you just do it from a prop. Sorry, you guys, it is like excessively windy today and there was just like a very loud noise that came from outside the house. But anyways, as I was saying, I think you're gonna have an easier time if you actually take a propagation and start it in water and then just keep that in water permanently. Now, some things you definitely need to be aware of. Your plant is not going to grow as big if you're growing it in water versus soil. It's just one of those things, it's not gonna happen. Now, that might not be a con, that could be a pro. Perhaps you don't have a lot of space and you need the plant to stay smaller. That In that case, this would be a great thing for you to do. But if you do want that plant to get nice and big and large, just be aware that it's not gonna get as big. You guys, seriously, I don't know what is going on with the wind outside, it is like freaking me out, sorry. So just be aware, the plant is not gonna get nearly as big if you're leaving it in water as it would in soil. Just something I want you to be aware of. Now, the other thing, and I touched on this earlier in the video, the big question probably on everybody's mind is, can it survive as long in water as it would in soil, longer or not as long? 
It's kind of hard to say, you guys, because the factors are very different, right? Like if we ran an experiment and I put a plant in water, I put the same plant in soil and we did it from propagation stage, right? We just propagate the plant, put it into soil, propagate the plant, put it into water. We put them in the exact same environment and we let them grow. You know, one could die earlier, one could die later, and it could have nothing to do with the fact that it was in water or it was in soil because maybe I accidentally overwatered it a couple of times when it was soil and that's what led to that plant dying. It's just very hard to have a completely controlled environment to really test that theory. Now, I do kind of have, I guess, I have a hunch that some of these plants can survive longer than others living in water. And I think really what I'm, in my brain, like the tarot plants and the plants I was talking about that will grow in like shallow water areas just out in the wild, I feel like those plants probably will grow fine and probably live just as long in water as they would in soil. The ones that don't grow that way as much in their natural environment, so for example, like your ficuses, I'm gonna go out of limb and say they probably are not gonna survive as long grown in water as they would in soil. Now, once again, I can't really say how much less time they will stay alive in water than they would in soil because there's just not a really good way to run a truly, you know, accurate, good scientific experiment, at least in my house, maybe in a scientific lab somewhere, to figure it out. But for any of you guys out there who have tried growing the same plant in both soil and water for, you know, years and years and years, if you have that experience and you found, you know, your soil ones are lasting X many years longer, whatever it may be, or vice versa, please comment down below and let people know because really it's just gonna be about personal experience with people to know how to answer that question. Now, I personally do not grow plants in water for extended period of time, but that is because I just am the world's worst about changing out water for my water propagations. And I don't, if I can't like stay on top of it when I'm propagating a plant, I'm not gonna stay on top of it if I'm trying to grow a plant permanently in water. It is just not for me because I just, once again, I'm, I don't stay on top of things like that. And so for other people though, if you struggle with staying on top of watering your plants that are in soil, then yeah, this would be a great option for you. You're like, lady, you're crazy. Like that would be so easy. I just gotta change that water out once a week. I don't have to worry about underwatering it. I don't have to worry about overwatering it. This is great. So really it's just personal preference. It's kind of personal, you know, decisions or personal, I don't even know what I'm trying to say right now. It's your, your personal opinions or feelings, I guess would be the word, on what you're more likely to actually do versus what you're more likely to slack on, I guess would be the way to put it. So it is really up to each individual person as to whether this is something that would work for you or not. But hopefully I've given you enough of an understanding of how it works today and some of the pros and cons for you to figure it out. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you guys one of the biggest pros about hydroponics and growing plants solely in Water is that you don't have to deal with fungus gnats. No soil, no gnats. If you guys do have any additional questions or any questions on additional plants that I didn't mention today, just drop a comment below and let me know. You can also DM me on Instagram at Aloha Plant Life. But I hope this has helped you guys out today, especially since a lot of you have been asking me questions on this. If so, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha.